Welcome to my engineer complete build and guide video. I absolutely love the engineer. He makes up the bulk of my 650 plus hours playing Deep Rock and I'm really looking forward to sharing my recommendations with you all. In this video, we're going to examine everything from primaries all the way through to the perks. I have run experiments and have video comparisons, screen grabs, data, and have even mathematically worked out sections so that you can make informed decisions going forward. This build guide is focusing around the smart rifle. We will be starting off with our armor options as they are generic, and then we're going to start looking at the smart rifle and how we're going to build and layer this around it. All footage is Hazard 5 or an Elite Deep Dive, unless clearly stated otherwise. This full build image will also be available as the last part of the video, so you have a reference to go back to. I think unlike other guns where certain builds you take can be interchanged, I feel with the Smart Rifle, because it's unique playstyle, we really need to build the gun around it, and that's what we're going to look at here today with all of these different options available. This has been discussed over and over again on the forums, but at rank one, we really only have one option, and that is improved generator, and we'll go over the details why. Here we can see our main two options up against each other. I've got a frame perfect start for when the shields go down, so we can really see what improved generator gives us. And it obviously kicks in sooner before boosted converter, and here if we pause this at eight seconds, boosted converter is only just kicking in, yet we can already take a few hits with the improved generator, potentially saving us health. At 10 seconds in, it's about level pegging, but it's that early point that we're talking about here of when boosted converter has no shields, but improved generator has some shields. At 13 seconds, boosted converter is one, but if we go back to this eight second point, this is why we take improved generator, potentially saving you that precious health damage on hazard five and elite deep dives. Rank 2 is a bit more of a personal choice. I actually take Overcharger for the 5 extra shields rather than Healthy for the plus 20 health. Now I do this because I think over a run the extra shield health is probably going to save me, especially when you factor in full damage as well. Now think about this drink Red Rock Blaster, it scales better with Healthy, so keep those in mind for those runs. The plus 25% extra health gain when you resupply on resupplier also scales with healthy as well, as we can see here. I've overlaid two different clips, one is with super low health and one is with the health you have when you've just been revived, and then we can see the outcome here when you resupply. So this is plus 75 health or plus 94, and then we can see the difference if you have healthy, plus 87 and plus 109. So that can make a, dis a difference when you use resupplier. I actually do use resupplier, yet I still take the extra shields. I just think an extra five shields is gonna be better over the course of a run. Our final choices are really just between shockwave for area damage when the shields go down and breathing room for extra vulnerability time when we get revived. Although we are gonna look at static discharge as well. And let's have a look at all three of these in practice now. Shockwave gives us a damage of 8 to 16 in a 5 meter radius when our shields go down and static discharge is similar but it's kind of like a mini electrocution, a much lighter version of the electrocution status effect. Both benefit from our improved generator for our shields coming on quicker. We can see some clips of these both in action. This is Shockwave first and you can see these jellies are just swamping me and then the shields go down and it takes them out. If we slow this down, you'll be able to see down the bottom left as my shields go down, we then get the audio cue and then all of the jellies are gone, and then I can get out of there. Same with these swarmers here, you can see one of them died, and then the other two were on almost no health, so presumably the other one had already taken a bit of damage, and these guys have almost gone. And that is because we can look here that swarmers on hazard 5 have got 14.4 health, and our shockwave deals 8 to 16, so we have a chance of killing them outright, and with jellies here, we are guaranteed to kill them, they've only got 6 health. Now if we compare this to static discharge, we can see the swarmers, it's barely done anything, it hasn't even really slowed them down either. And keep in mind static discharge is only a 2 meter radius as well. And then the same with the jellies here, these have come onto us and they haven't even died, whereas with shockwave they did die and we could move on. And then to see if the slow makes much of a difference, 
not really. Static discharge has just not really achieved much. Now we've got breathing room for the extra three seconds. So normally you have three seconds of your vulnerability when you when you are revived, but this puts it up to six, which obviously can make a difference if you are resupplying, especially if you've got resupplier, or if you're reviving a down dwarf. So both are good options. I personally take shockwave. I just feel it's going to be more consistent. The primary weapon I'm using for this engineer build is the Smart Rifle, as controversial as that is. Now I'm not going to go into the full details of the build here because I've got the 100 hours using the Smart Rifle video guide which goes into every single tier upgrade, the explanations of why I've got that, ways to manage the gun, issues to deal with, it's all in that video. I also have the Smart Rifle versus the Stubby comparison video, it breaks down how the guns work against different enemies and in various different scenarios. So I recommend you watch those two. What I'm going to focus in in this small section here about the Smart Rifle is some additional little nuances of the gun and some additional information which isn't in those videos before I move on to my uh, secondaries and then the other different options that we're going to go over here. I have spent a lot of hours on the forums and in my own YouTube comment section as people have spoken about their experience with the Smart Rifle, good and bad. One of the first things I want to highlight here is that this is a different playstyle and mentality to what you might have done before. I used to play crowd control stubby mainly before the smart rifle, applying the slow and damage over time, poking at groups from close to medium range helping my teammates to finish them off. Smart rifle plays in a completely different way. With the smart rifle we're now in hunter scanning mode, constantly looking around for the acid spitter, menace or oppressor to take down. We're ignoring the smaller clumps of grunts because we've got our sentry guns or our teammates that can deal with them. With the Executioner build, we're effectively holding an auto-aiming, curving round to weak points, high damage, burst firing sniper rifle. We want to make sure that we can maximise our time to kill, our time to find those priorities and kill them. I do this by spending less time looking at the weaker grunts and more time ready to pounce on those threats. This is stage 2 from Elite Deep Dive and you can see me doing just that, ignoring those grunts on the other side, taking down this slasher. You'll even see me prep up the scanning, I'll get the lock-ons, but I'm not going to fire unless I really need to. I can see my sentry guns are firing, I can see the gunner is firing, so I don't release the trigger. But these Maxira come in, and I'm straight on them to try and take them down. This is a clip from the same Elite Deep Dive, and it shows we obviously just can't completely ignore the hordes. We may well have to use our smart rifle or our secondaries to help with them. But we can also take down targets at range, such as this Warden, and we can do it quickly and efficiently whilst also helping our team. This is about potentially changing your mentality into thinking that your primary is just for those bigger threats, and for the hordes, you've got your secondaries, which we're going to use to take them down and still help the team. We are not just completely ignoring the hordes and leaving our teammates to deal with them, we're just using different tools to help out. One of the questions I get asked quite often is about the use of electrical chemical rounds at tier 3 instead of piercing rounds, and then using electric generator mod instead of the unstable lock mechanism. Now how this works is the fact that electrical chemical rounds, if you are hitting a target which is electrified, you get plus 20% damage, and if it's burning, you get plus 20% damage, and that stacks for a potential juicy plus 40% damage. Combining this with the electric generator mod, as long as the target you shoot has got three or more locks, you apply electrocution, which is obviously one half of the electrical chemical rounds requirement, and then you back that up with an inferno breach cutter so that you get that plus 40%. In this clip, we're going to see exactly how it works. I've applied my locks, one bullet has been fired, and now we can see the target is electrified. So the rest of the bullets are going to have that plus 20% extra damage, which is what we get from the unstable lock mechanism anyway, but we've still applied electrified. Now this is obviously great against a lot of targets because we've lost 20% extra damage just on that first bullet, but we've regained it because the target is electrified for the remaining amount of the bullets which we're going to fire in that burst. And if we combine this with the Inferno Breach Cutter, we have the potential to set them on fire and then have 20% more damage that's more than if you have piercing rounds and the unstable lock mechanism. So this sounds great on paper, we've pretty much got the same plus 20% damage as Unstable Lock Mechanism, and all we've lost is piercing rounds, and we even gain the fact that we can electrify them as well. But, 
We can't forget that some targets like dreadnoughts and oppressors can't be electrified. We're losing plus 20% damage for unstable lock mechanism guarantees and we would need to set these targets on fire before we would get that plus 20% damage. So let's see this in practice. This is the consistent build with piercing rounds and unstable lock mechanism and we can see we have one ammo left so it was 23 bullets to take out this oppressor. Now to compare, obviously this just gives us a baseline because this is not electrified or ignited. So effectively we're losing the 20% extra damage. So it's an extra four bullets and a reload. Small note that this oppressor had taken a little bit of damage already. So we ignite it. And now we unload, so we're getting the 20% extra for ignited. Five bullets left. And now if we do the same with our high voltage crossover, so it should be similar. Five bullets left. Also of note that sometimes you might need to fire twice to make sure you ignite the target, which can obviously cause issues. And now for that plus 40% damage, so we can see one burst and this Praetorian is down. There's just eight bullets, not even a second burst required. High voltage crossover, one burst, and now a second burst. This is an additional three bullets and obviously time as well. We also need to consider that in the Inferno on the Breach Cutter, it's not going to have as good armor shredding. So here I actually hit some armor, so the high voltage crossover is actually been more ammo efficient even though the Inferno does more damage because I've hit armor, as we can see here with the differences. I think this all comes down to consistency on the left hand side and chance on the right hand side. Electrical chemical rounds and the electric generator mod, they can be fantastic against a Praetorian if you can apply that inferno, if you can get through the armour, but with the piercing rounds it's always going to be guaranteed to help you when you get stuck in the middle of a horde. The unstable lock mechanism, you know if you've got 8 locks you're getting that plus 20% damage, you're not worrying, oh can my target actually be electrocuted? oh do I need to get my inferno before I can fire my smart rifle we've got consistency on the left hand side let alone if we consider the armor breaking drop that we take with inferno and removing the ability that we have slow with high voltage crossover this is why I think my left hand side the piercing rounds and the unstable lock mechanism is going to be better especially when we consider that super blow through as you play more, you'll get better at trying to curve your bullets to hit more targets. So this is with the super blow through rounds, the ability to try and twist and move that line so that you'll hit more targets, maximizing those super blow through rounds. This is also a quick clip about animation cancelling. I want to thank some of the people commenting on my videos because I didn't really know it was a thing about reloading. But this really shows you the difference between firing and then cancelling that animation halfway through and then you can get back to firing. Now I knew about this in certain things like with the platform gun but I didn't realise how powerful it was when it came to reloading. And my final point is about using the user interface. Now if we change this you can see the difference about when we lock onto this Weber. So this is with the smallest and you can see we can hardly see the amount of locks we've got on. If we change the UI to maximum we can see those locks are a bit easier to see. Something to consider. And super quick about the pickaxe, I just used a quicker cooldown because you're going to be using it more against grunts which get in your face when you're using the smart rifle. Now I use the, the quicker cooldown on every dwarf I use apart from the scout which has a wider area effect. The sentry gun section I thought was going to be really quick because I didn't think anything was going to challenge what I already perceived as the best options for the sentry guns. But I've really challenged myself here and even changed my build based on making this video. So bear with me as we really go into the details about the sentry gun. And also it is really important when using the smart rifle because you're relying on them so much more to deal with those hordes. I'm not going to be breaking down the differences between one turret or not, for me it's been done to death on the forums and it's pretty clear that the Gemini system with Defender is just 
deals so much more damage, it's going to have the DPS you're going to need to back you up with the Smart Rifle. Also, rank 2, I think it just has to be the expanded ammo, again if you're using the Smart Rifle. This main video is going to be breaking down that t those tier 3 upgrades. Is it going to be hardened rounds? Is it going to be stun? Is it going to be the extra magazine? And we really break it down with all of the math and video comparisons now. We start off with just a quick video just to see what stun is going to do, whether we like it or not. For me, it has some utility, but I just don't think it's good enough for what we want when it comes to the smart rifle and our using our sentry guns to take on the hordes. Now this is with the hardened rounds. And it's really hard to see what difference or benefit we gain when using these. When we look at these clips side by side, it doesn't really seem that much difference of how quickly we're taking down the grunts. So what do we gain by taking hardened rounds? So light armor stops 20% damage, and that is even on Glyphid grunts as we can see in this video clip right here. Now we can see bits of the grunt, bits of the guard are actually coming off. That's the armor. So each time your bullet hits those, that's 20% which is being stopped unless you remove that armor. Medium armor reduces damage by 50% and heavy armor stops it completely unless broken, such as on a Praetorian. So where do we start on trying to work out the benefit hardened rounds gives us? Well, if we look at the top left, our sentry gun deals 11 damage. That's 11 damage to a normal fleshy part of the enemy, not a piece of armor. If we include the armor at the bottom, we can see it's minus 20% against the grunts, the guards, against their armor. So therefore, that is going to reduce that damage to 8.8. If we look on this table, we can see it's got a handy chart of what kind of um, armor damage will then make it so there's the percentage of knocking that armor off. So if we take this with our 11 damage, we have a 36% chance of hitting a grunt or a guard and taking off a plate of armor so that then our next shot will do the full 11 damage, not the 8.8. If we then take in the fact that effectively with the hardened rounds we've got 44 armor damage rather than 11, that brings us up to approximately 85% chance of taking off an armor plating, so if our next hits will actually do our full amount of damage of 11 hitting the flesh. A Glyphid Guard on Hazard 5 has got 324 health, so you can see with this maths here, if we only hit armor, we do 8.8 .8 damage, it's going to take 37 hits from our sentry guns. If it didn't have any armor at all, that's 11 damage per hit, it'd be 30 hits. So depending on what we choose and how quickly we break that armor, we're going to be somewhere in between these two numbers. So let's see this broken down with videos. As a side note, I'm actually using this on Hazard 3 just because it was easier to record these scenarios. With the Glyphid Guard in this scenario, I ran this experiment three times of each of the different sentry gun loadouts to give us an average, and also as I maneuvered, I tried to make sure the sentry gun wasn't going to get any weak point damage, such as face hits. Feel much better now. I only managed to get one clip of each of the Mactira Brundle, and when you see the final results for these hardened rounds, we obviously get some weak point damage because our damage average goes above 11. But this could be part of the experiment anyway, because it's more likely you're going to take the armor off to reveal those weak points. Warmers, team. Lots of them coming your way. I wanted to see what difference hardened rounds made against the Glyphid Dreadnought shell, so I fought my way through to this Elite Deep Dive Stage 2 so I could compare. 
When I put this into super slow-mo mode, I couldn't see any difference. And then I went onto the Deep Rock Galactic Wikipedia and realized that it makes no difference armor break against the Glyphid Shell. So at least my hard work has <laughs> shown, you, shown you all what difference it makes. And that's none, including these clips with the Breach Cutter against it. So fighting my way to stage two of this elite deep dive three times actually because I forgot to record once was a complete waste of time but at least you know now. Reduced armor breaks such as the inferno overclock might not change this scenario but against say the twins or glyphid Praetorians, it will make a difference. And finally I did a test to see how long it would take each of these different sentry gun loadouts to completely empty its magazine before it needs to be reloaded. I guess this also impacts how quickly it takes you to reload, obviously 90 ammo compared to 120 is going to be a bit quicker, but here is the information and then we'll discuss it all at the end. Also worth noting is the fact that I did this three times with each of the different loadouts to give us an average and there was a variance as sometimes the sentry guns would be tracking a faster moving target but we have the averages at the end. Also worth noting is I did the hardened rounds experiment against the Praetorians and I did them three times each as well and got an average and obviously the hardened rounds always came out on top expending less ammo and killing the Praetorian quicker. I've just overlaid a cut down example so you can see the experiment was done. I'm not putting the full clips in because it takes a long time for the sentry guns to finish its kill. And here is our final data, the expanded ammo capacity can fire for about 12 to 14 seconds longer than the hardened rounds can. So obviously that can make a difference, you can go and do more stuff before you need to reload. But when we compare these Glyphid Guards and the Mactera Brundle, we're talking about more hits required, that's more ammunition and more time before it's moving on to the next target. Now this can make a huge difference to your runs, especially with the Smart Rifle where you're relying on the sentry guns to be dealing more damage to those hordes to make up for the fact that you're not focusing so much on them. I have used expanded ammo on the engineer for about 20 promotions now and I did not think I was ever going to change but it really highlights with these videos why I'm now going to go over to hardened rounds especially when using the smart rifle when I can babysit my sentry guns a lot easier keeping them topped up having the expanded ammo isn't so much of an issue and having those ammo efficiencies and quicker DPS is going to be a benefit whilst using the smart rifle. The Breach Cutter is an absolute beast in Deep Rock Galactic, great at taking down the hordes and larger enemies alike. It can penetrate through unlimited amount of targets, it's got a decent range as well, it's just an all round amazing weapon and it's going to be great for us when we're using the Smart Rifle because it can fire at close range and deal with those pesky hordes when they get right up in our face. And we can even shoot through solid rock with the Breach Cutter. It's always worth tagging the target if you've got an engineer with the Breach Cutter. It makes it easier for us to shoot through these walls. Fuel cells fully charged. Drop pod engine powering up. Hold your ground. We're almost ready to pull you and the goods out. Some people pair the smart rifle with the RPG, the grenade launcher, using the fat boy to deal with the hordes rather than the breach cutter. Now I think this has got a slight issue with the fact that the amount of ammo, 20 for the breach cutter, 5 for the grenade launcher, which is just, you know, when you've got the hordes coming at you, you want to quickly know that you can pull out your secondary and deal with them. Like in this situation, I want the breach cutter here, the grenade launcher, it's not going to help me in that situation, let alone if I don't have the ammo. I may well find myself not wanting to fire. I'm on low health here, I've got swarmers coming in. I just want to pull out the breach cutter. In a situation like this, I can just pull out the breach cutter, old dependable. The gear mods for the breach cutter are pretty straightforward, so we're going to fly through them now. At tier 1, we've got a choice between longer projectile lifetimes, that's effectively range, or magazine size. Now with high voltage crossover, we have a magazine of size of 2, which is pretty small, but the projectile lifetime is just so much handier for doing those long shots through walls. At rank 2, we have a choice between a 
wider plasma line, which is probably more likely to deal damage to your teammates. We've got extra damage, which is really nice, but plus six ammo capacity is our only choice really with the breach cutter, especially when we're using this with the smart rifle, where we're gonna be relying on it far more for the hordes. Absolutely no choice at tier three. Deploying our plasma line instantly so we can take down units in our face is just gonna be so helpful. And also, spoiler for the perk section, with born ready, we're not gonna be reloading our breach cutter anyway. Tier four can have a bigger impact depending on what overclock you're gonna use. Now I use high voltage crossover. It has that electrocution, so effectively it's kind of like the stun is built in. I'm slowing them down. Therefore I can take the armor breaking, which is obviously gonna help me against Praetorians, the twins, anything with armor. Other valid options are definitely lightweight cases for additional ammo. Therefore you might wanna take the stun instead because you've lost that slow and the same with Inferno. But of course you lose that armor breaking, which can be really handy. And at tier 5 we're using Plasma Trail. I mainly use this for Swarmers, especially if you're using the Smart Rifle, Swarmers can just be annoying. Plasma Trail you can just take them out, carry on with your day. Plasma Trail is also just straight up additional damage as we can see on this Dreadnought, and can also take out targets as well. I don't actually hit him with my pickaxe here, I hit his armour, but the Plasma Trail finishes him off. Explosive Goodbye can also give you additional damage, but you need to micromanage it. On Hazard 5 or Elite Deep Dives, often you just want to fire your breach cutter and move on, especially if you're using the Smart Rifle. Triple Split Line can effectively increase your DPS by hitting more targets, but I find the size you gain isn't enough to warrant not taking Plasma Trail. It can help you with things like Mectera though. The Breach Cutter has just generally got good all-round utility, shooting through walls to help your teammates. It's just so handy, like this example with this leech here. Also, once you get used to how the nuances of it work, you'll get used to that one-shot line. You won't need the triple-shot line, and then you can have Plasma Trail for that additional DPS as well. Combining the Breach Cutter with our Smart Rifle allows us to focus on what we do best with the Smart Rifle, high-priority targets at long range, cutting back to our Breach Cutter if the Horde gets too close. We want to be focusing on these high priority targets, but that can allow the horde to get close to us whilst we're not paying attention. This is why we quickly just pull out the breach cutter and then we can survive. Also, you can see here this plasma trail finishes this grunt off so I can get back to looking for high priority targets. Stand back, supply pod inbound. Gear modifications for the platform gun are ridiculously easy. It's basically ammo and repellent. That's <laughs> that, that's pretty much all the choices we have. Uh, some people do take the additional ammo, but I'm really going to try and sell you repellent with these videos. Expanded ammo at rank 1 just makes sense. We can animation cancel to get our rate of fire up. So this is just I'm left clicking, tapping right click, and the animation cancel helps. As for requiring a magazine of 8, I can't see a situation where I would want a magazine of 8 rather than just more total ammo. Even taking repellent at rank 3, we're generally still going to have more than enough ammo to do what we want to do. Of course, maybe like blocking up holes is going to be a bit of an issue, but even then I'd still prefer to have the option of having repellent and then just taking maybe a resupply to, if I really want to ensure to block up a hole or to be able to do some kind of a staircase or something like we're seeing here. With repellent, it's best to think of the rule of four. So that's effectively four platforms and then leave a gap and then another four platforms. Now, it's not always going to work how you want to. For example, I was trying to hope that on that right hand side they'd all go on the lower end of the gap. But generally, the repellent is always going to help you. So here I've tried to make it so there's three different entrances one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. It's just reducing the amount of places I need to focus and it's making it easier for me to group up targets. Like I say, this right hand side, they're kind of going up and around, which also isn't too bad because it's taking them longer to get to me. It's not quite what I planned. You're not always gonna get it right when you go to do it, but generally it's gonna help you either way. And you can always go and um, customize it. Like here, it's an egg mission, so I know I'm gonna bring them back here. I just change it so that next time they will come that way. 
and we can see the middle gap, the swarm is all coming this way, just makes life a lot easier. Here I've extended out from the wall and you can see the actual, I've just extended the path, it's making them longer to try and get round to me, just gives me a bit more time and a bit more freedom and it helps us line them up for things like breach cutter and super blade. The plasma grenade pairs up perfectly with our smart rifle because we need something that can instantaneously take down large sections of the horde and just completely wipe out whole sides of the, you know, of grunts and guards coming through. And that is what the plasma grenade gives us. Instantaneous access to just wiping out whole sections. And this is what we're going to need if, say, our breach cutter is on reload, you know, we're waiting for that born ready. It's just going to be so helpful to deal with, as we can see in these clips. Also having six of them, absolutely amazing. We get three every time we reload. It's just absolutely perfect. Obviously there's the friendly fire aspect, but I would say plasma grenade and proximity grenade, often the friendly fire comes hand in hand with both of these options. We also need to factor in that the plasma grenade is just so much fun to use as well. With the proximity grenade, we lose that instant ability to be able to call on support. Here, my dash is on cooldown, I've unloaded my breach cutter. This is where I want to pull out the plasma grenade and take out these units in front of me. Instead, I'm getting bogged down by the slasher and could have died by that Mactura spawn. Proximity grenades can be great if you can build yourself a little fortress, but even then, there, we just had one grunt. Now we're starting to see some benefit and then one grunt again. We lose mobility and we lose speed when it comes to using the proximity grenades. Now I would say if you're going to use the smart rifle, I think you pretty much just have to use the plasma grenade. You're going to be at a very big disadvantage using the proximity grenade. And especially if a bulk detonator comes in and completely dest destroys your little fortress that you've made, it can be a right pain in the backside. And right here we can see Dash is on cooldown, I've unloaded the breach cutter, I've still got that horde coming towards me, this is where I want to fire the plasma grenade. I'm not going to talk about the lure for two reasons, one this video is getting very long, secondly I just hardly use the lure to be honest. Also when it comes to the smart rifle and thinking about our ammo conservation, the plasma grenade is going to kill the units, the lure we're still going to be required to use the breach cutter or the smart rifle and that's going to consume our ammo. I have a couple of videos for some of the perks, but we're going to talk through most of them just to save us a bit of time. So friendly makes sense, we've got plasma grenades, we've got a breach cutter, let's just try and keep that friendly fire down. Born ready, we've already gone over. I was going to have a video clip where I fire the breach cutter 8 times and don't reload, but you get the picture. The breach cutter takes 3.5 seconds to reload, 5 seconds for born ready, and you can keep your primary weapon firing in the meantime just makes sense. Resupplier is a little bit optional. I actually really like it because it pretty much puts you up to full health whenever you resupply. Also, we can't avoid it. With the smart rifle, we're going to be resupplying more often, doing it quicker. You might need to do it in a pinch situation, as I will show you with this video now. In the middle of a tough fight, I go for a risky resupply. I select my breach cutter, even though I know it's got zero ammo in the magazine. I can see the slasher and the grunts coming towards me, but I know as soon as I resupply, I can unload and save myself. Dash is a must have when you're using the smart rifle. It could just quickly get you out of dangerous situations, provide a little bit of distance between you and the target, either so that you can use the smart rifle or one of your secondaries. And finally we have shield link. This makes sense because we're probably going to be navigating around our sentry guns in defensive positions, so providing that shield boost to everyone or the shield recharge to everyone is really helpful. We can provide that shield boost on a two minute cooldown. I often do this on a gunner to try and keep them alive so that they can then put a shield down on anyone else who goes down. 
This has been my full build and guide video on an engineer using the Smart Rifle. I really hope you found it interesting and I want to thank you if you've made it this far into the video. This has been a real beast of a video to try and make, by far the most complicated and long-winded video I've ever done, recording so many different extra sections to try and put in with different comparisons and then you know trying to come up with different um, art and things to put in as well. It's been a really hard one to do but I really really hope that you've all really enjoyed it and here are a few outtakes whilst I was trying to do some of those comparison videos. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time. Swarm! I repeat, swarm! Go, go!